The problems we encounter are a consequence of the choices that we make. That's why ancient Greek philosophers placed great emphasis on the moral importance of choices. As Epictetus said in his discourses, where is good in our reason choices? Where is evil in our reason choices? Where is it that which neither is neither good nor evil in the things outside of our own reasoned choice? It used to be that nature was cruel and unforgiving. Making choices was very important. The consequences would matter. The ramifications would echo widely and be felt deeply. And I think this is the source of strong conservative morals in previous eras. However, the primary drive of modernity seems to be to insulate ourselves from the consequences of our decisions. In the modern era, we have resolved many of these issues. Francis Bacon's desire to use science for the relief of man's estate has metamorphosed into a desire to do whatever we want with no consequences. But we aren't the masters of the universe. We might fancy ourselves to be, and though science can negate the majority of a problem, rarely is it a perfect cure. Even if you can fix it, it often won't be as good as it was before. The cure, the cure itself is rarely as effective as prevention. Though you may have been relieved of the problem, there will doubtless be some side effects, and these side effects could be with you for the rest of your life. Even if science can remove our wounds and leave no visible marks, there are other concerns regarding the damage to our character that we mustn't simply ignore. We are not as in control of the world or ourselves as we like to pretend, and a bit of humility before the universe can only serve us well. This is the value of prudence. Aristotle described prudence as a virtue of the deliberative part of reason that could rationally decide on those actions that lead to a life of virtue and human flourishing. Put simply, prudence is that faculty that enables us to make sensible decisions, that enables us to live good lives. The practical wisdom we exhibit in our deliberations is what prevents our need to call upon science to save us from the consequences of said decisions. If we make wise choices, we don't have to suffer adverse consequences. Abortion is one of those issues that demands practical wisdom. Sure, abortion can be a solution to a problem. A couple have decided to have unprotected sex, which conceived a baby. The woman is then presented with two obvious choices. She can carry it to term, or she can seek an abortion. She must either sacrifice her prior plans, or destroy the baby in the womb. It's never a moral good to commit to destroy an unborn child, but it is noble to make sacrifices on behalf of others, especially children. Nobody could reasonably desire their own abortion and so cannot decree it desirable for anyone else. No legislator of morality can say it's good. Fundamentally, elective abortion is driven from selfish desires. It is at best an evil whose excess we try to minimise. We impose restrictions on it to ensure that it is as humane as possible. And this is why underneath the drive to advocate abortion up until the point of birth and the shout your abortion movement is a deep moral pit. The more excessive the false convictions expressed by the pro-abortion movement, the deeper the pit gets. It is not a good to commit to the destruction of the unborn. In fact, it's a tremendous moral failing on the part of the destroyer. It's hard to believe that someone who keeps needing to get an abortion is acting in a responsible way, let alone those people who seem to use abortion as a form of contraceptive. It doubtless causes a kind of weathering of the soul that can be seen in the eyes. Is that the kind of person you want to be? Is that the kind of person you want others to perceive you as? Do you want to have to carry that in your own heart? Prevention is better than cure. Because the things you go through change and scar you. You get to choose which kind of scars you're going to get. You accrue enough of a certain kind of scar and people see you as a certain kind of person. 
This is the development of your own character that is at stake. And the sooner you realize this and take control of it, the better it is for you and the people around you. Because some scars aren't worth living with. It's a question of self-respect and one's own sense of personal sanctity. Your own sense of being is valuable and you should protect it. And the status and station you occupy in life is determined by the choices you make. Nowhere is this better illustrated than in the case of Maria Deve Gonzalez Lopez. Maria was a 23-year-old Argentinian pro-abortion activist who died during a legal chemical abortion in April this year. The tragedy of this young death is overshadowed only by the cosmic irony of a pro-abortion activist dying during an abortion procedure. Her case shows precisely what I am trying to say. The universe is terribly complex, and our actions can and will have unintended consequences. If she had made more prudent decisions, this likely would not have happened to her. The immoral decision to end her unborn baby's life would have not led her to her fate. Instead, she adopted an ideology that demanded that nature conform to her will. She believed that she could use science to correct the consequences of her decisions, and nature punished her for it. Were she to have adopted a more moral and prudent position on the issue of reproduction, her own self-respect, and personal sanctity, she would still be alive today. Choose your scars wisely, because they will be with you forever. They will be the public reminder of the lessons you have learned, and privately weigh on you in ways that you won't be able to predict in advance. So be prudent with the scars you accrue. You won't regret it.